Untold Crime and Penalties, The Story of the Danbury Trashes on Netflix is by far my favorite documentary this year and watching it gives a lot of food for thought for marketing. Firstly, I wanna say I read that Jeff Bezos is looking to buy an NFL team. And if he does and he wants it to be loved, he needs to put AJ Galanti at the head of running that team. Whatever you wanna say about them, the Galantis created a team that people all over the world would fall in love with in a documentary about a minor league hockey team. Which let's be honest, if you documented most of the NHL teams those years, I am sure there would be interesting stuff, but nothing like this team. Putting everything else aside for a minute, they started a new team and got it to a point that it had sellout stadiums with even people scalping tickets, got national news coverage, and it's a business that didn't even last two full years. Was it built on different sources of funding? Sure. But the marketing side of things, they smashed it out of the park. In fact, I even think they were a bit ahead of their time. If they did the same thing today, I think it would go even bigger because of the internet. A lot of what they were doing plays into the internet. Sure, they got a lot of national news coverage at the time, but still, it was a story largely forgotten or didn't quite register because I've seen a lot of people who never knew this happened and wish they could have gone at the time. It's easy to dismiss their success because they had all this money from other sources. You can say, well, they did this because they had so much money and could outspend other teams in the league. But if soccer teaches us anything, Manchester City can spend £100 million on one player and yet can't sell out a stadium. With their manager even publicly disappointed at their attendance levels. Red Bull Leipzig is hated in Germany because the team was bought and so on. Simply having the money to spend does not guarantee you fans. It doesn't guarantee you sell out stadiums and it doesn't bring you dedicated fans who are still heartbroken years later that the team stopped. Obviously having money as opposed to not having money is an advantage, but it by no means underplays how successful they were at marketing this team. And the money side of it is a lesson too. Using your unfair advantages to get ahead. Whether we want to admit it or not, we all have different unfair advantages. Obviously in the Trash's case, they kind of took it too far and that became illegal, but I'm talking about in terms of what you can do legally. There are aspects to all of our lives that we can use for marketing. Whether it be you know someone or you went through some type of interesting life event, any way you can incorporate something unique that a media organization would eat up is going to help you get the name out there. Having a 17 year old be the general manager is always going to be something the media go crazy for. A lot of these unfair advantages also come at a cost and there's no better example than Gretzky. Brent Gretzky that is, living in his brother's shadows has to suck but he would also get better offers as a result. And it draws attention which is something that the Danbury Trashers leaned into by announcing they had signed Gretzky. A lot of other players they also signed had the bad guy image. There's a huge amount of the good guys and bad guys in marketing. Anytime you can build in the good and bad, it brings in the media and fans. Some people want to see the good guys win, but there are also people who want to see what the bad guys are actually going to do, and there are people who follow bad guys who become super fans. You only need to look at someone like Tom Brady when he was at the Patriots. He was hated by many around the league, but to Patriot fans, he was a god. And all these elements put together create a show. So many sports teams forget they are putting on entertainment. People want to be entertained, they want a show, they want the storylines, and they want an environment where no one knows what to expect, but they know that they can expect anything to happen. So many businesses also forget about this when they market online. They announce that they have a new product, but so what, who cares? It's cool for you that you have a new product, but if you give the people entertainment in the announcement, then people will pay attention. Not everyone is going to love the Danbury trashes. Some people will hate them, but that also makes people that love them really love them. They leaned into the bad boy image that you couldn't get away with in the NHL to that level. Which also highlights how you need to be aware of what environment you are operating in. Coca-Cola can get away with an ad where people dance on the beach and just slap their logo on it and subliminally it works for them. But a niche soft drink would get nowhere doing that, they would need to find their own angle. If you're new and operating in the small times, you need to do something big to stand out. The trash has also created an us against them element with the league, where the fans and the team felt like the league was against them. Which creates an interesting storyline where the fans feel like they and the team are fighting for more than just to win a random minor hockey league game. Beyond that, having a way for the most dedicated fans to feel appreciated in the way that the Trashers had Section 102 also makes fans feel valued. It even makes fans feel like that they need to strive to be more dedicated so that they can fit in with those extreme fans. Ultimately, we can all only hope to create marketing as effective as the Danbury Trashers. 
What did you take away from the documentary? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this, chuck me a like and subscribe to see more like it. And as always, good luck. And if you made it this far, you'll probably enjoy one of these videos too.